All right, everyone, welcome to Digital Conversations. I am your host, Billy Bateman, and today I am joined by the one and only Bill Glenn. Bill, how are you doing, man? I'm great, Billy. How are you doing today? Doing good, doing good. Uh, two guys who probably have the same given first name and go by a nickname here is uh, is what I would assume. Right, right. Well, it's funny you say that because my uh, I had an old PayPal name and, and it was Billy G and my team just found it this, this week and they've been make, making fun of me all week asking me for how many years I've been called Billy, which has been a lot, but I've been able to hide that for four years. Oh yeah, from, from them, but now now they know, and I've got lots of nicknames coming my way this week. I'm so, sure, man. Well, welcome to the world of having another Billy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I you're Bill, so you're the grown up version. Uh, <laughs> right. I, I'm still yet to grow up. Um, <laughs> although I had a boss who very much wanted me to go by William, and I was just like, yeah, man, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, good choice. Good choice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, man. Well, today um, we're going to have you introduce yourself, but the topic is we're going to talk about how to create a best in class relationship with your SDR team. Um, but before we dive into that, for those that don't know you and, and what you're about and what Extra Hop's about, first tell us just a little bit about yourself and your your journey to becoming VP of uh, Worldwide Demand there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, currently at a company called Extra Hop, we're a privately held company backed by two um, private equity organizations. Um, and uh, I've been with the organization just about four years now. The company is about 15 years old. So we, we, we talk about ourselves being a 15 year old startup. Um, but we what we offer to mostly security professionals is um, a way for our security professionals to leverage the extra hop technology to guard against advanced threats and protect organizations from bad actors. And so as a cybersecurity product and company, our intention is to uh, become the, the market leader in network detection and response or NDR in our category, and intentionally to partner with other world-class organizations to build best in class or best of breed solutions uh, so that we can help security professionals stay on the offense against some of these bad actors and, and keep those bad actors either out of their organization or if those bad actors happen to penetrate into their organization, we help the security professionals find those bad actors quickly and remediate those issues as best and as fast as we can. Great, great. And then before you were at Extra Hop, what, what were you doing, man? Yeah, so I've been, I guess, a, a serial uh, startup marketing guy for about 20 years. Um, I've been the head of marketing at a number of different companies, mostly B2B. Um, I worked in companies, a publicly traded company that was selling new domain names in partnership with GoDaddy oh. and um, also was a head of marketing for a, um, a public sector focused company that was helping um, both government organizations and citizens get access to open data, publicly available data and leverage technology to make better both uh, community decisions and also help constituents be more informed about how governments were spending their money. Um, so those were two in particular that I, I really enjoyed because I think we were mission driven, purpose driven, and we help we help the individuals as well as businesses to uh, you know take advantage of technology in new and interesting ways. And then I had a, also had a four year stint as a head of marketing in a HR tech company that was focused on improving the hiring process from day one and. Um, that that also was a fun ride in building a brand called TalentWise that's yeah. since, since acquired. Um, but uh, all of these adventures have been super exciting for me because I just I, I love the passion of startup organizations and working closely with sales teams as a marketing leader to understand how we can help them achieve goals and help help the company, uh, you know, uh, deliver on solutions, technology solutions in general. Uh, that help both businesses and consumers. Great, man, dude. Those that's really interesting. Um, anytime you're part of a mission-driven organization, it's always better than just coming in and we're just here to make money. You know, right, right, um, absolutely. Yeah, I feel like that has to be part of so so many tech marketers and and tech sellers. They, you know, that's what they're looking for today. And I think companies owe it to them to think intentionally about what is the mission, not just how we're going to serve customers, but how we serve our communities as well. For sure, man. I love it. I love it. Hiring, dude, I feel like I'm always in the middle of hiring. So uh, right. that is a problem that will never be completely <laughs> stuck, but any improvements are welcome. Um, For sure. Okay, man. So let's let's hop into it. This is something when we were talking about doing a podcast that as soon as you mentioned it, I was like, 
yes, this is this is something we need to talk about more. Um, I don't think I think people do talk about it, but but not enough. Um, yeah. which, how do you create that really tight relationship between marketing and your SDR team? And I've seen it done a lot of different ways. I think personally, I think in B two B. Uh, marketing and sales, we're moving towards, we're not going to have marketing and sales as completely different departments. Right. It's going to be revenue. Um, and I don't know when that's going to be, but it's going to be a revenue or some cool name they'll, they'll, they'll figure out to brand it up. But it'll be everyone working together and better relationships than we have right now. And not so much of the, you know, marketing leads suck, sales never calls them. <laughs> like, trying to solve that problem. Right. You know? Um, so what, you know, what does that mean to you? Like what does a best in class partnership between marketing and an SDR team look like in, in your vision and, and what you guys are doing? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Um, and, and I do think most organizations are tackling this problem today because I agree with you that, you know, thinking about this in, in a, you know, revenue, revenue operations, however you want to talk about it, like it, it, it's all about shared goals. And I think that that's where we start in terms of best in class. And I know there's been a lot of research done recently around, you know, if marketing and sales uh, think intentionally about defined and having shared goals, that just makes them that much more accountable together and also in lockstep for what we're trying to achieve. So that, you know, frankly, it just eliminates a lot of that finger pointing between the organizations. So I think, you know, just starting with what, what are the company's shared goals and how does that relate specifically to revenue? And what, it, what are the contributions that both an, an inside sales organization and a marketing organization can rally around together and what can we impact and influence in ways that maybe are slightly separate in the funnel from an outside selling organization and where the outside sales organization takes the deals ultimately. Yeah. But at least at you know, top to mid funnel to begin with, let's make sure that there is tight alignment on uh, less about what we would call the vanity metrics of the MQL and yeah. more about like, you know, let's let's be real about opportunity creation and real pipeline that is being developed, you know, initially with marketing, but then a quick handoff to the the inside sales organization, understanding that both of us only succeed if all of those things that we're generating at the top of the funnel ultimately wait, make their way through to the outside sales team. And those, you know, the majority of those deals get closed. And if we're not thinking about full funnel from, yeah. from the get-go, then we probably aren't going to have shared goals and shared alignment. And it would be very easy to finger point. But that's that's the starting point for me. I think awesome. Yeah. So I've got a, a, a question for you. There at Extra Hop, um, I've seen it done a couple different ways with our customers. Is the SDR team part of marketing or part of sales or like its own thing entirely? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you asked that question. I was going to mention that at the beginning that uh, at Extra Hop, we actually have a separate organization. So the inside sales organization rolls up to our sales leader, worldwide head of sales. Um, okay. But we have an entire SDR leadership team that we meet with weekly as a marketing leaders team to think about those shared goals and define them and understand what's happening in each of our worlds. I've seen it done other ways. I've actually worked at one of, one of my startups. We actually had the SDRs rolling into the marketing team. I tend to not get sort of worked up about which place it ultimately rolls up to. And I've actually found sort of benefits and drawbacks in, in both ways. But what I like about what we're doing at Extra Hop is you know, defining and starting with those shared goals but more so trying to generate uh, the closed loop feedback that I think is so critical in whether it's our marketing campaigns or the SDRs doing their outbounding motion. Both of us can learn from those activities and being able to talk openly about what's working and what's not and doing it on a very frequent basis for us. Again, it's weekly. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think, and I think there's other companies out there that actually like do standups every day and talk about like what we're going to do day in and day out. Um, yep. I don't know if you, I don't know if that's always worthwhile, depending on you know what type of business you're in. But the more frequent communication, for sure, on that closed loop of you know which campaigns are working, what's the what's the true feedback after the sales organization, the inside sales organization uh, starts to have those initial conversations marketing needs to know what that sounds like. And, you know, I used to say, oh, well, you have to get on the headset and be, a, you know, be on that splitter with the, with the inside seller so that marketing knows that. I feel like, you know, you know, our chat back te technology today doesn't necessarily require that. But yeah. I do think the, I think marketing has to understand 
you know, what, what are the day in day out challenges of the SDR team intimately? And if they don't understand that, you know, I think, I think we're, you know, fooling ourselves, we'd be setting up that team for success since we, we don't roll up to the same uh, ultimate leader, sales, sales or marketing leader. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It doesn't, I don't think it really matters where they report into as long as there is that good relationship. Yeah. You can do that a lot of different ways. Like actually from where I'm recording, I'm, I'm watching my demand gen leader and my sales leader talk about how they can tighten up some processes, you know? Um, so, you know, like just have that relationship. So what are you, what do you guys do to build that trust and that rapport between the two groups? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's been harder in COVID times, I will say, but I think, you know, pre COVID times, it actually started with getting to know one another better. And I think like the social aspect of work is so critical because, you know, we do work with it so closely between our teams, trying to get to know the individuals on the teams. And certainly in, in um, every tech company that I've worked at, and I think it's a, a pretty common f- phenomenon where you may not, you might not see as long of, of tenures of the traditional inside sales organization. And I think we've tried to, prevent that best we can by, you know, uh, getting to know one another on a personal level, getting to uh, understand, you know, what are the day in and day out challenges, both personally and professionally, especially now in COVID times, and having more informal interactions just as much as we would have formal interactions. Um, I think that's step one. Um, I think, you know, the the other thing that we've tried to do is, uh, we haven't formally said SLA, I think, in the four years that I've been here. And then I think every other company I've worked at, we, you know, we talked about process and we talked about defining SLAs. Yeah. And I think and it's not to say that we don't have measurement and we don't have process or rigor, but I think if we we, we sort of loosened the reins on the terminology of SLA because it just felt like it had a negative connotation to it. And it was more just about like, hey, we have certain activities that are high impact activities and then others that are maybe not as high impact and how do we spend as much time as we can on those high impact activities and push some of those low impact or you know kind of like the table stakes activities to the wayside such that we can just get focused on how how many meaningful conversations did you have not you know how many dials did you make right or or how many bad leads versus good leads you know how many mql how many mal's turned into mql's like Yes, we have to measure MQLs. We'll never be let off the hook for that. But it's more about like, are we finding the right target buyer? What are their common objections? What what have they already learned from our competitors that we need to be more value oriented and give give those prospects like something really meaningful to chew on so that when they walk away from either a first marketing campaign engagement or a first conversation with an SDR, they, they have a different set of mindset in their in their head of, you know, this person that I just spoke with was re- really knowledgeable. This person understood my problems and this person seems to actually really care about me. They're not just here to sell something. Yeah, dude, I, I, I agree. Like you're talking about all the right things, in my opinion, and I, I love it. So what are you actually like? What are you measuring for for that success? Like, how do you how do you guys measure success? Yeah, well, you know. Our, our most traditional funnel metrics, it really is about the opportunity create and it's really about you know the the true funnel, if you will. I think that our um, where we're headed as an organization, and I think this is sort of the evolution of social selling and and you know social engagement, excuse me, is is about meaningful conversations and it's about um, how, how are we creating lasting impressions? and lasting connections with our SDR organization and our prospects and our key customers. And and so I think that, you know, I'll heavily focus that, you know, this part of the conversation around LinkedIn, because we feel like that's our best tool right now, Sales Navigator LinkedIn to do our outbounding or leverage social as a means to share, you know, high quality content from the marketing team. But I think the way, the way we're going to measure this is, you know, how many of these folks that we first reached out to, one, start to accept our, you know, requests for connections, but two, are willing to have more than, you know, one or two initial conversations, even if that doesn't mean that, even if that means we're not going to sell them something in the next 12 months, but we start to build the relationship early. And so we're playing the long game and we're saying, you know, there's going to be a number of these 
uh, high level business decision makers that need to turn to professionals like us for expertise in our field. And they should feel confident when they have a conversation with us that ultimately they know we would love to sell them something, but we're here first to make the, you know, make their lives, enrich their lives with hopefully more valuable information. And yep. it then, then creates that trust and that long-term play. Even if that SDR ends up leaving our organization, I still view that as a win if, if that helps us you know, in the short term, make those connections because the our buyers will, I think, in the long run, say that's a that's a company and a brand that that really cared about my business problem and, and cared about me and what I'm facing each and every day, than just trying to sell the next piece of technology. I love it, man. The more like I've seen this at a couple different organizations. You know, the sales guys. A common complaint is, oh, they're not the buyer leads. You know, like they're not ready. They're tire kickers, but. If we can, as marketers, really provide them with a lot of quality conversations, even if it's not going to be a deal that closes this week, this month, this quarter, yeah. you know, like, dude, sales is a tough job. Like, yeah, it is a tough job. Like anyone that does sales full time, grinds it out. You have my respect because yeah. it's not easy. And I think sometimes the marketing team, we forget like these guys are putting you know, like we're sending out emails, we're running campaigns, like we're doing all of these things, but we don't have to put our face up out there and call somebody and say, hey, you know, have you heard about us? Are you interested? How can we help you? Yeah. You know, that's not easy to have that conversation over and over again when, you know, even in the best of times, like you're still getting the door shut and rejected. That's way right. more than they're saying, yeah, let's talk. So yeah. if we can really focus on, I love how you're talking about get them good conversations because just what that does for their psyche has got to be huge. Yeah. Not, not to mention the variable comp just to, you know, yeah. talk really plainly yeah. about it. You can get paid too, right, you know? right. Right. But I, but, but I think that that's critical is the, is being, you know, kind of putting yourself in their shoes. And I was actually talking to a, uh, a college senior yesterday about an internship and she actually did an internship with us in, uh, in our SDR department. And then she ultimately wants to come over when she graduates and hopefully work in our marketing department. And yeah. she said, I just thought, found it so valuable to first sit in the, you know, in the sales organization and work with the SDR team. And she said, that's going to make my transition into marketing that much better because I will have understood them intimately in their pain and their process that they go through and what motivates them and what gets them excited every single day. And I yeah. couldn't agree more. And I, I, I found this over the course of my career is there, I, I started my career in sales and just the limited time that I had in a sales role, like I feel like I have such more appreciation for that role and what they go through day in and day out that I, I hope that I can bring that back to my marketing teams to say, you have to spend more time with these folks. You have to understand what they're facing. And you also have to understand their comp models and like what is motivating for them and what and and how are they, what is their mindset as they think about not only making connections, but also about, you know, creating a healthy income for themselves and staying motivated beyond just the money, but that satisfaction of making a meaningful connection because there is a lot of rejection. And I would suspect that if we can build, help build, help them build better, you know, conversations, hopefully then it turns into less rejection and, and more, you know, more acceptance, if you will. More acceptance, more deals, yeah. more money, you know, because yeah. like, yeah. Dude, if you do, anyone will do a bad, like a job they don't even enjoy. If the comp is enough, you may not do it forever, right. but you'll do it for a while. So yeah. let's talk about SDR career because most people don't stay in that role yeah. for their whole career. Um, what are you guys doing to help them develop their career and, and move forward? Yeah, I think, I guess for us tangentially, what we've tried to do is we, we want to be able to offer up, you know, typically after like, you know, 12 months in the seat, we try and, you know, have sort of a minimum timeline of, you know, make sure that you have done your job effectively, you understand your job. And then if you're ready to, you know, think about career progression, uh, have open conversations directly with their managers on the SDR side, but start right. to have start to have conversations even, you know, nine months in with some of the marketing, different marketing leaders on my team and in other parts of the marketing organization. Because I think a lot of folks who start early in their career in this SDR role, they're still trying to figure out, like it was a great entry point and it may be a good, you know, 
you know, even multi-year proposition to begin with. But there's a fair number of them who said, I always wanted to be in marketing, but I couldn't get into an entry level role in marketing. So I took the job in SDR to get my foot in the door. And I think we want to be able to honor that to say, well, you know, if you went to college, like what was your degree? And if you didn't, that's okay too. But where, where, where are your passion? And where, you know, where do you see yourself? You know, and I don't say like, where do you see yourself in five years? Like in tech, that's forever. But it's more like, hey, in the next six to 12 months, how have you thought about, you know, now that you understand our organization, the way it operates, how do you think about how, you know, where you want to take your career and kind of put some onus and ownership back on those individuals to yeah. take the responsibility of, of reaching out? It's like, you know, it's like you can do good networking outside of your company. You can do even better networking inside your company to understand what's going on with other departments and where you might see some cross, you know, uh, um, overlap or some crossover points. And for us, we're we're trying to find more entry level type positions in marketing, whether it's through internships or you know one year out of school or one year in another you know another function like SDR, yeah. where we can say we're willing to you know train up really good, motivated, you know, hungry people. And frankly, a lot of the SDRs like have all the great characteristics that we want in a marketing person, right? They're accountable. They're, you know, they are responsible, they're, they're delivering day in and day out, and they come in with a lot of great and creative ideas. And we, and, you know, we, we take a lot of really good ideas from our SDRs and the SDR yeah. leadership and try and put those into practice. And frankly, some of those we'd be like, I would have never thought of that in the marketing side because they're yeah. closer to the, they're closer to the, you know, that prospect or customer in many ways. And they hear things that we don't. And that's that closed loop feedback I talked about before is, we, we got to be able to think about how we move SDRs over into marketing because that will just make our marketing organization stronger in the long term. Dude, I agree. I, I actually sit down with our sales organization every week for about 45 minutes on Friday morning. And, you know, sometimes they give a training, but I always want to hear their ideas like, yeah. hey, how do we get some more deals across the finish line? What do we need to do? Yeah. And because those guys are on the phone with everybody, like, they'll say, hey, you know, like we need another integration into this or we need answers to these questions or that. And I like, sometimes I'm like, man, I would never even have thought of this um, without sitting down and talking to these guys. They have yeah. a ton of good ideas yeah. and they really know what's going on. So that's so true. Uh, the, the other thing that you just mentioned that kind of spurred a different thought was uh, not maybe not as much at Extra Hop, but certainly other places I've worked. Sometimes the SDRs, uh, if, especially if they're newer into the organization or newer into the role, they don't feel necessarily as comfortable speaking up about, you know, either uh, new ideas or, you know, you know, changing processes or kind of rocking the boat, I, you know, yeah. those, those kind of ideas, if leadership is in the room. And so we, we have intentionally at XROP and other places I've worked said, you know, we, we need to find those peer to peer conversation moments where people are comfortable sharing the uncomfortable yeah. and being okay with that. And then figuring out how to surface that back to the either the SDR leaders or the marketing leaders in a way that doesn't sound like they're just going against what we've already you know planned and rolled out. But yeah. it, it, but but they're they're comfortable saying, I can tell you why this isn't working, and and I have some better you know ways to improve this. But some of the folks, even though you would think a lot of them would be extroverted, we actually have a fair amount of introverted people who are in this role too. And they're just not as like apt to in a big room setting, you know, share some of those ideas and they're great ideas. They just don't like the, they just don't like to put themselves out there in a, in, you know, a, a bigger setting. For sure, man, for sure. And then something else you hit on was just like the networking within your own company. That's yeah. something that uh, when I was younger, I wish I would have done a better job of. And uh, I, I love that you brought that up. I actually had lunch two or three weeks ago with the, with a new guy we hired just very young, starting his career, first full-time job. And, you know, he's on our support team. He wants to be in tech, but he's not sure, like, exactly what he wants to do. And I was yeah. like, dude, you need to just, like, go talk to people, invite people to go to lunch with you. You know, we we don't hire a-holes here. Like, everybody's nice. Um, and just learn, like, yeah. you know, like, they may – everyone everyone's going to leave at some point, you know. Like, very few people are going to stay here forever. And – they may open up doors for you at another company or open up a door for you on their team when they have something, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. You want to just network within your own company, like as much as you can. I think it's, I think it's really overlooked, honestly. 
Yeah, we we just rolled out recently a a formal mentorship mentorship program inside of Extra Hop, and I, I got to say, like, I'm so excited about that because I've been mentoring um, at University of Washington. I've been mentoring both undergrad and graduate students, MBAs, and the the challenge of breaking into companies, you know, early in your career is, you know, while there's more networking opportunities, there's that that much more competition out there and you know who you know you know no matter what city you're in i happen to be in seattle which still feels small town and all about who you know but i think yeah. that that's pretty common in you know in most cities big and small is yeah. you know leverage the network that's the that's the faster path to career growth and i love the fact that we're trying to you know foster that inside of our own company and trying to match up people that are not necessarily in the same departments with one another on that mentorship, because I think it expands the thinking, especially those early in their career to be like, well, I sort of fell into sales or I fell into marketing, but I didn't know if that's really what I wanted to do. Yeah. Have those conversations early with a mentor and it'll, it'll hopefully expand your horizon on you know what's possible out there for you as you advance in your career. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I, I love that. I love that. So we're running out of time, but I've got one more question for you. Yeah. Yeah, I know you guys are innovating. So like, what are you testing? What are you trying um, that other demand gen leaders and SDR leaders can try as you know, you guys are building this, this relationship, which is something that's not like a check the box. It's a constant thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll share one that we're, we're just getting started uh, like literally right now. So not, not even fully rolled out yet, but um, we spent a lot of time talking with the SDR leaders about conversion rates and you know, and it started with you know conversion rates based on data in the funnel. Yep. But what what that's translated into and the project that we're trying is about uh, you know where I started before about conversation quality and meaningful connections. And so we're working with a third party agency that uh, that is an expert in LinkedIn, and they share the same philosophy that we do that it's a long game and that it's all it's all about providing value back to the end customer. And so we want to start that value creation and value delivery process as early in the funnel as we can. And we want to use tools like LinkedIn and we want to use our chat bots and we want to think intentionally about let's have more true conversations and less, you know, uh, kind of transactional interchanges yeah. and, and be about getting to know that person on the other end of the, your LinkedIn connection or the phone or the email, whatever it may be. And while, while it feels like it could elongate our sales cycle, I, I think in the long run, it, it really won't because we, and I think a lot of tech companies have a very long sales cycle to begin with. And yeah. if we can build that trust earlier on in the, in the conversation and the meetup, I just think that uh, the more authentic we can be and the more value we can give early with the content that we're creating, hopefully the, our buyers find it valuable, that the SDRs will be viewed then as leaders in their industry you know, for not only where they're at today, but where they're at in the future. And we've had a lot of examples of people who have left Extra Hop and they brought basically Extra Hop to their next company. Yeah. But the way in which they do that is actually to go back to some of those initial connections they had with the SDRs to say, I really love the way that you worked with me the first time I implemented Extra Hop. Now that I'm at a new company, I want to work with you again because you know you just helped me navigate the process and made it an easy and enjoyable buying experience. And that just comes from you know having high quality SDRs that yep. know know how to build relationships, not just about you know trying to push a sale. Awesome, man. Awesome. I love it. The the higher quality people you can have, the better everything is going to go. You know, the less defined process you you necessarily have to have, and you can give more latitude to just say, hey, like here's what we're trying to get done. Let's make it happen, you know? Yeah, you absolutely. So, oh, right, hey, Bill, dude, I appreciate it so much. Um, if people want to get in contact with you and continue the conversation, what's the best way for them to reach out? Yeah. Um, first of all, I, I enjoyed the conversation as well. Thank you, Billy. This has been awesome. I appreciate being part of your audience and um, your network. Uh, people that are interested in Extra Hop, they can go to extrahop.com. And uh, people that want to get in touch with me, I'd say best way is probably LinkedIn. And I'm uh, at William W. Glenn with two N's. Okay. Okay. Awesome. We will chat later and you have a great one. All right. Thanks, Billy. You too. Appreciate it.